So hello everybody and thank you for giving me the floor this afternoon to talk about innovation education but on a very modest scale I'm going to tell you about the attempts that we carry out here in our lab uh, at the University of Teacher Education in Lausanne, Switzerland. So I started out with trying to tease you into hearing about a cocktail of collaborative learning scenarios, flexible learning spaces and digital resources to support innovation in education. Maybe I should just say a few words about where I come from and why I'm so interested in these topics. I was a classroom teacher for 15 years. I had the opportunity to retrain in digital education. And now I've been managing uh, teacher training programs, school head programs uh, in digitization. And I'm also the lucky Swiss delegate in the European School Net's interactive classroom working group. So a big fan of European School Net. And I have learned so much by interacting with all the wonderful people who try to make school better one day at a time. So if you came to visit our lab, what would it look like? So we were very lucky, and this is something you should learn from. Um, our university has very, very nice premises with a beautiful view along the lake in Lausanne. But unfortunately, these buildings were too small. So they were looking for volunteers to move to the town centre, which is pretty unpleasant. You might see here in the background, uh, it's really industrial buildings, former factories. So I thought this is my opportunity to finally get my lag. So I said, OK, I will move. And uh, the Department of um, Digital Skills came with us. So we Sorry, have. Oh, oh. Stephanie, yes? uh, we don't see your camera, so we would love to see your background. Ah, yes, turn sorry on about the camera. That. Okay, there we are. Do you see me now? Yes, yes, okay, perfect. So there you, you see the wonderful factory buildings in the background. So um, when you come into our lab, you will have on the one hand, the future classroom lab space. We also have the cultural mediation. That means that we have works of art that were given to our institution that are locked up in a room here, and we can use these works of art for projects with kids. And we also have a maker space, which is more geared towards adults, but we can also use sometimes for specific projects. So we've really got a very large space. And as we noticed from the previous keynote speakers, space is of the essence to be able to really uh, develop these new learning scenarios. So this is what it looked like when we opened 18 months ago in the middle of the pandemic. With uh, We could welcome classes, but no students. They were all at home. And you can see in the background that things have developed a lot over the last few months. Like most FCLs, we have a zoning concept. So we have... Um, a zone dedicated to uh, informatics and computational thinking, because this is a new focus of our curriculum, in particular with younger children. Before these things were done uh, more at the secondary school level, now we're working already with, with kindergarten children around that. We also have a focus on what we can do with all these screens that we've installed in the classrooms so that they're not reinforcing uh, teacher-led teaching, but are really places, spaces where students can share their projects and think and learn together. We also have a lot of tools for inclusion because we noticed that this is something that the teachers find challenging to include a maximum of kids in the learning opportunities. And of course, we have a zone with creativity tools, we have a little bit of virtual reality and also scientific tools for investigation. But as you can see, things move around and the tools are not in the center in our space. So what are we trying to do in here, basically? Um, throughout my career as a teacher, I realized that as soon as you want to develop new skills in the students, it could be digital education, but it could also be more soft skills like collaboration and project work. You have to churn, change the learning scenarios. And we have a big crisis in Switzerland right now with a lot of schools investing a lot of money in bring your own device and the teachers still teaching as they used to teach. And of course, there's a clash because you have to completely rethink your teaching and how students learn when there are devices available and the information that these devices provide. 
So once you're focused more on personalizing learning, on including all the teachers, on differentiated paths, very often the classroom becomes an obstacle. In Switzerland, we love very solid furniture that lasts a lifetime, heavy desks that can barely be moved. So here, as in the future classroom lab, we really wanted to give a look to all the people who come to visit us. How could it be different for the same price, sometimes even less money? So redesigning the learning spaces is also a focus of ours. Now, how do we make these objectives concrete on a day-to-day -day basis? Obviously, our main audience are future teachers. We offer them uh, lots of workshops and we try to work a little bit differently from the university. Our workshops, they find them on our website. They can sign up 24 hours in advance. We give the workshop anyway. If there's five, 10, 15 students, we give the workshop. Um, a lot of our students are, have had a first career in another job and they come back to teaching and sometimes they need to catch up very basic digital skills that are useful in the classroom, for example, working with a tablet. So there's a lot of energy that goes into uh, giving workshops for these people. And we also have students who would like to go beyond the curriculum, who are curious about what can be done with a virtual and augmented reality or uh, they would like to do more robotics and uh, making. And so we also cater to their needs. And we also follow a lot of research projects. But the core activity, what really motivates us and all, where we also integrate our students is welcoming classes here into the lab to experience learning scenarios to develop their digital skills. Right now, we're a bit at a turning point which is we're starting to retrain the teachers and they were trained in the year 2000 and obviously the skills they got there are not very useful for what's in the curriculum right now so we're retraining them the schools aren't, aren't all equipped and so there are a lot of teachers who see this new curriculum and think my god how am i going to manage this so they're going to come here with their class they have to participate there are there's me and my colleagues, but there are also students here to accompany the children. And we try to learn all together so that when they go back, they've already had a first experience of what teaching with digital tools could look like. And we also have holiday programs where there we welcome kids from this uh, neighborhood, which is rather poor. So a lot of these kids don't go, uh, don't get to go on holiday. So the parents are very grateful that they can come here while they're working. And uh, this is these are programs that we run with our students. I send a newsletter. I say, who would like to come? We're going to work on these projects. Students come at eight in the morning. We prepare everything. It's a bit of a lesson study. Huh? We look at how we're going to do it. We run the program in the afternoon. And in the evening, we debrief to see how to do it better the next time. So that's really the heart of our activity. As to these learning scenarios that we develop, well, they're really very, very close to the Navigado uh, line. So we're really full into this constructivism paradigm, which is that we learn, first of all, when we know what we want to learn, because unfortunately with technology, it's very easy to be caught up with things that we don't really knew, need and spend a lot of time uh, tinkering around objects and not learn much. So we're focused on the objectives, the learning skills, they could also be learning skills in French, in math, in geography, focused on that. And then we want all our kids to have a real experience, a project that they're going to carry out with their colleagues from the classroom, because we know that learning is inherently a social process. And we really experience this every day. What's maybe a little bit special, so these are a few views of training courses. So I'm not saying everything's uh, you know, a lot of fun. This is more word processing for teachers who can't, you know, prepare their papers. But there's a lot more of this going on. Our students who come work on a project and by the end of the workshop, they've got something to show their colleagues. And for the kids workshops, we work 
very much around a story. That's super important for us, that the kids come and they're carried by a learning scenario that's going to motivate them to overcome certain difficulties. Because I myself, not being a geek, I know that if I just walk into a room and I'm told that I have to code in Python, this is not going to get me interested. But if there's a mission to accomplish, if a group depends on me, then I'm probably going to do what it takes to get the project carried out. So these are the things that we focus on. There's always a time where we share the project, so we have to time it very carefully so that there's the celebration at the end of the session, the half day usually, and time to reflect with the children, with the students upon what's been learnt. And this picture that I'm showing you right now is very emblematic because in this picture, we have students, we have the teachers, we have our students, and finally, we don't know who's who. Everybody's really engaged in the activity. So just to give you a few examples of these missions that we give our classes when they come, we have a lot of requests from teachers to do things with their kids around misinformation and fake news. So we've developed several missions of fact checking, and we work a lot around this fake island, Lotonayo. Go and have a look once on the internet. Uh, this is a, an amazing uh, language teacher, I think, who developed this fake island. And the, the kids just, you know, they run with it. Some of them even tell me they've been there. So that's the starting point of this investigation into fake images, fake articles, fake social media posts. And we always go all the way to the production. We also have a lot of scenarios that take place on this moon base. Now, this is a real story. The NASA really wants to go back on the moon. And so we have robotic missions on there. We also had a project uh, during the February holidays where they had to build uh, new dormitories and, and, you know, playgrounds for the people working on this base because of the meteorites. Everything had to move. So here we have a combination of a Timio robot and they're using oops, the Lego spike engine here to make the, the air system work. So we really try to get them involved and to try to get them to finish a product. Now, the students that work with us, they have to be ready to be silly. Now, this is this morning, and we have one of my students here who is doing this robot game with very small, it's a group of kindergarten kids who were about to discover their first robot. So we're trying to teach them basic commands um, so that the students can then transfer this understanding onto the movements of the robot. Um, with older kids, it's going to be the same. If you look here at the top picture right, we see the teacher who's really working with the students. She doesn't know anything about this robot either, but she's very engaged. And the interesting thing is we notice exactly the same engagement with our students. This is two weeks ago. We had a, a big international week and uh, you, we had students from all over the world. And here with a scenario, um, uh, also a mission, everybody was working uh, very hard on the project and it was done by midday. I may be going to show you a short video here. Uh, Elena, please tell me if you don't see the video. Do you have the video? Yes, we yes, see. see it. Good. So this is one of, uh, it was a project where the kids had to develop the town of the future. And during the summer activities, we're going to have kids from 6 to 14, and we have to find a way to differentiate so that they can all carry out the project together. So here they're in the phase where they're discovering the tools, and then they really had a choice of different tools, and then they discovered that this, these little Sphero robots could be programmed um, to go through the water, so they decided to build some... Um, the one here you see where the robots have to go through the water and then back into their ideal town. So that's very much the atmosphere of our summer programs. Back to the presentation. Same here, so that's uh, the famous machine I showed you before going around on the moon base. Uh, but we're not only doing... Um, 
computer science. We're also working on literacy projects, uh, books, and we use a lot the works of art that are available to us. For example, here the kids could go and discover a work of art in that locker over there and then make up a musical uh, composition about one of these works of art. They had a fantastic time. So to conclude, we can say that the teachers who come with their students, they're fully involved and they're learning. So they really this is not really sold as CPD, but we see that this is a moment where they can observe their children, where they can build confidence into the projects. Very often, here again, two teachers, a whole group, my students, everybody's working on the project. And um, interestingly enough, uh, I also have colleagues. Here, for example, you see an English lecturer who came and spent the morning with us. He was interested and he ended up working alongside the students uh, on building um, this structure with small objects. So for us, this learning space, it's a space about developing scenarios, but it's also a space to network all the people involved in uh, educational technology. The EdTech partners are very important. They provide a lot of the equipment that we have here, in particular the furniture, because they know that a lot of people come here and get to see it. So please go and have a look at our website. We have a whole zone with blogs where you can see all the videos of the projects that we carry out. It, it's very simple, um, but I think there's something working here and there's a nice community building uh, where the differences between the teachers, the professors, the students and the pupils is really being leveled out. Thank you very much for listening to me.